Vahid Razavi with BizCloud. I'm here with Anthony Escarfagnano, the Senior Vice President of uh, Dun & Bradstreet Data and Insight. Anthony, thank you so much for being here this afternoon. You just uh, had a presentation uh, at Data Week. Could you tell us a little about it? Sure. I was talking about problem formulation in the face of overwhelming quantities of data and how we need to think about our questions differently and, and the way that technology is enabling us to see things in a different way. So in regards to those questions that can be answered uh, today that wasn't possible before, what is the, uh, the influence of big data? I mean, what are the types of questions that we're able to answer now that we couldn't do in the past? Well, if you think about the way questions were asked in the past, you had to ask questions that were in the constraints of what was knowable. Now we're in a world where you pretty much have all you could possibly want in terms of data. So it's very different. It's like walking into a grocery store and having all the food you could possibly want. Now you have to decide what to cook. It's a very different model than saying, gee, I wonder what I can do with what I can find in the woods, for example. So what are we limited by? Is it our ability to ask the right questions? Or is it the, the train of thought that we have to teach the new data scientists? What are some of the limitations in regards to asking the right question? Yeah, I think you just nailed it. So it's no longer about how big is your hard drive or can you get the right data. Assume the answer to those questions are as big as you need it to be and as much data as I want. The real question is can you ask the right question? Can you understand the problem that you're trying to solve and formulate a question that's actually answerable in the context of that problem. The people who can, can get those skills right and can nail those, the data scientists that can help us to see the way to ask the right questions, those are the people that are going to really go after the big value. Now, we talk a lot about data scientists, and Dunham Bradstreet provides a lot of data to actual end users within the corporation. So can you tell me, you know, in a big data perspective, what is the benefit that comes to the end users from using uh, big data solutions from Dunham Bradstreet and others in regards to the types of questions that they're able to answer besides what the data scientists are able to answer? Sure. So we're, we're undergoing a very big shift at DMB. We used to talk a lot about how many records there were in our database and how many, how many, how many. It was all about the number of records. And then we would give you this big block of data and kind of wish you luck. And now we're moving much more towards an environment where we work with you to formulate those questions. And we have analytic solutions that help drive you towards predicting the answer to your questions. Or we have descriptive solutions that help you find the answers to your questions. Very, very different than just handing you a block of data and a hearty handshake. I see. So in regards to empowering that end user that using this, is using Dun & Bradstreet data, will they need to be a data scientist themselves, or is this a pretty simple process for the end users to leverage the data that you provide? Well, I think that depends on your definition of simple, and it depends on the question. But in general, it's a much more collaborative relationship that we're trying to drive towards. So it's not, not necessarily a question of handing you a, a bunch of data and then hoping that you can find the answer. It's really working with you to refine those questions and make sure that the data and the analytics that you're getting actually support answering those questions. And we also learn from your questions by doing that, by the way. So over a period of time, do you think that machines can ask the right questions? That depends on who you ask. So there's one school of thought that says if we have a big enough set of data and a smart enough neural network and you just let it run long enough, it'll kind of discover everything there is to be discovered in that data. There's another school of thought, and I'm in the latter school of thought, that says that that, that first school of thought is partially correct. So you'll get most of the way there by doing that. But the questions that are asked, the way that neural networks operate is informed by the people who set them up. So if you don't teach it to sort of think in the right way, it's not going to lead you down those paths. The, the second school of thought is much more constructivist. By, by actually doing the research, new questions emerge. And those new questions lead to different research. And that research leads to the exposition of new knowledge. So it's much more dispositive than just push the button, wait for the answer, hope it makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, Anthony. Well, I greatly appreciate your presence here at Data Week, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to BizCloud. Great pleasure.